Near the centre of England lies a stretch of land very few have hiked across. Not for any interesting reasons like impassable terrain or laser shooting crocodiles, but rather at first glance it doesn't really seem like a place you'd want to hike across. In between Cotswolds and the Peak District there isn't a large national park or many trails to choose from and even fewer long distance ones. But nevertheless here on the 26th day of my 50 day hike across England I stood at its border, preparing to hike and wild camp my way across it. To be honest I thought it would be the most boring section of my trip, but oh boy was I wrong. It was late in the day as I made my way out of Cotswold, having just completed the Cotswold Way. As I hiked to the border of the National Park, I spotted a cool hidden gem within the forest, a carving in a tree made by a Belgium soldier in 1917. I continued to walk along the beautiful rolling hills till I found a nice place to camp, and having a lovely dinner of tin spaghetti bolognese, I hit the hay. Good morning everyone. Today I'm heading to a place I'm really excited to check out and I've done zero research. All I know is that this area of England is where Shakespeare was born, which is pretty awesome. I hiked towards the historic town of Stratford-upon-Avon and followed an old train line converted into a walking path. Along the trail you could see real trains turned into cafes. Within no time I made it to Stratford-upon-Avon and wandered around the beautiful streets, admiring the historic architecture and even got to see the house where Shakespeare was born. Really nice little town. Lots of sort of Tudor style homes there. It's very cool to look back in time and see the different architecture and it's well preserved there. I'm just continuing on along a river for a while but just loving this weather. Oh my goodness, it is glorious. This town marked the real start of my hike across the unknown, an area of England not often explored on foot. I'll admit it wasn't the best of starts, with most of the day being a tiring slog of mainly busy roads. The highlights were definitely the quaint towns boosting beautifully old architecture I got to walk through. I got in some good distance that day, but with my energy now drained and the light fading fast, I made my way into a quiet pocket of nature to camp up for the night. Morning everyone, sore start today. I think I've pushed quite hard these last couple of days. I think it's caught up with me a bit. I am walking to a place called Kenworth or something. I think it's probably a two hour walk from here. I was busted, but on the bright side, today's trail was a lot more nature filled and even brought me past a stunning Kenilworth castle. Built in 1120, it was one of the most formidable fortresses in England. And this was further proven when it repelled a six month siege, the longest in English medieval history. However, the rest of the day was another slow slog. To reach Coventry City where I had booked a hotel room for the night. I am making my way out of Coventry now. Had a lovely evening. I met a really lovely couple from a YouTube channel called Not Another Adventure Channel. They were so lovely. They treated me to dinner. It's just so nice. They drove out to, to see me. It was amazing to meet them. Make sure to go check out their channel. And, just say hi from me. I'm heading out of Coventry now, heading back into the nature of England, and I am going towards a castle that is the first hidden gem I'm gonna be checking out today. It's about a three hour walk away. After a couple of hours of walking, mainly on main roads, I have come to a place called Astley Castle, and it kind of looks like a modern house built into the old ruins of a like, medieval building. But uh, there's no like signs to it here. I mean, there's nothing really. There's no one around, and it's a Sunday. Definitely a hidden gem off, off the trail, which is cool. This is really cool. It's like so... There's like no one here, and it's so creepy but in, in a really cool way. I don't know what I'm allowed to do or be but I'll just go until someone tells me I guess. There's definitely a modern building built within this so I'm really curious as to what it is. With a bit of research I found that this 16th century medieval manor has been converted into a hotel you can book online. Unfortunately, I would not be staying in as luxurious accommodations tonight as I hike my way across roads and through fields in search of a good place to pitch my tent. Good 
Good morning, everyone. Oh, it was tough to get up out of bed this morning. I must admit, I did lie in a bit. Usually, I'm getting up at just after six. This time, I got up at seven. I was just so comfy. Today is my like 29th day. I think it's almost a month, which is exciting. It's amazing. I feel I'm really happy to have done this much and gone this far. My 29th day started off great, and I felt I had done some good distance over the last couple of days. But little did I know that I was walking into what would turn out to be a very painful day. Ah, I fucked my neck. Ah, oh, I really messed it up. I don't know how. Ah, oh, it's stiff this morning. Ah, and I can barely turn it either side now. It's really painful. Oh, I think the bag. Ah, oh, fuck. <sighs> Shit. Yeah. I can't carry the bag at the moment. It's too painful. I've just taken some painkillers. Um, I have no choice but to continue on. I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I just have to keep going. That wasn't so bad. I won't lie, it was miserable walking for the next couple of miles. But the sight of a gibbet post by the road used to hang a murderer in the 1800s quickly made my neck pain feel not so bad in comparison. This area of the track, for some reason, they've just left a bunch of old trains on the side of it. I want to see if there's a way down, kind of get a closer look at these trains. The painkillers have kicked in, which is awesome. <laughs> it's only a little bit sore now, but definitely manageable to walk. Easy enough to come down, actually. Very cool. I'm just busted, absolutely busted. It's been lovely weather today, almost too lovely. <laughs> Not much shade until I got onto this trail. And so I've been walking on roads for most of today. Some cool gems though, right now I'm in like a really cool ruin. My neck is far, far from being 100%. It's still sore, but it's manageable. I think the painkillers have made me quite drowsy as well. So today has been weird. It hasn't been a bad day, I wouldn't say that. It's been tough, it's been really tough. just woken up in quite a lot of pain I don't know if I'll how to even get down the, the tent my back and my neck feels worse than yesterday I've taken some Neurofen so I'm hoping that will make the pain go away and I'll be able to put down the tent thankfully the painkillers kicked in and allowed me to pack my bag my back and neck were feeling really bad, and so I decided to push out six sore miles to reach the closest hotel for some much needed recovery. Oh, that was brutal. Let me get my bag off one second. My back was, and my neck, but it had gone down to my back this morning. It was really bad. I had to lie in the tent until the painkillers kicked in. And then after that, I could get up and put down the tent. And I just need to take a rest. I need to spend the rest of today lying in bed and doing nothing. To be honest, I don't really like getting hotels. It feels like cheating. <laughs> If I'm honest, but today I really felt like my body needs it. The neck, obviously. I think also just everything. I'm pretty beaten up at the moment, but I'm feeling very happy to be here. I'm just gonna order pizza, lie in bed, and sleep for hopefully hours and hours. So 
<laughs> I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Today, my back is feeling much, much better. The sun is out, ready to rock and roll again, which is really nice. My body feels good. The back is a little sore, but not too bad. And so I'm really happy with that. I feel almost 100%, so let's do this thing. Oh, man, my maps just pranked me hard. It told me that there was a way across the river, so I was expecting like a bridge, right? And instead, just nothing. I guess it's probably shallower than other parts of the river. <laughs> oh, man, and there is absolutely nowhere near to cross the river. This is the only spot. So unless I want to double back on myself a major bit, add hours to the journey, I ain't gonna have to figure a way across this river. I'm gonna go test without the bag, without any equipment. Make sure that it is shallow enough and not too slippy. Freezing! It's too cold for me to go far, but it seemed okay, uh, so let's go. <laughs> It is cold and the current is quite strong. I really got to be careful. Whoa, I almost stepped into a big old thing that was deep. I got to be more careful. My shoes! No! Ah, shit. I gotta go get my shoes. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's my shoes. Okay. That's my shoes. Yes! 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 Oh, man, that would have been so bad. Could you imagine? Oh my goodness, they've stayed tied on to themselves, but somehow not the bag. I'm obviously an idiot. Yes, now they're soaked. I'm freezing. I'm stung up my butt crack from nettles on that bank. But I don't care, because <laughs> all that can go away. But if I lose my shoes, that's game over. These are my only pair of shoes. So, I am so happy. I'm literally sitting in a field screaming in my boxers. I could not be happier. I'm an idiot, but we're across the river and I got my shoes. Now I'm gonna have to figure out how to dry everything. <laughs> but still, I'm happy. I have made it to a place called Hermit's Cave in a place called Hermit's Wood. It is a beautiful looking cave in this sort of unassuming wood in kind of the middle of nowhere England. It, I'm not in the Peak District yet. There's no real town or city around. And yet here under the trees lies a really cool hidden gem. This cave was carved out in the early 1100s and was home to a once baker who believed he was spoken to by God to go live a life of solitude and prayer. It was soon time to keep moving. The weather was beautiful and the landscapes were stunning. I was now drawing near to the border of the Peak District and out of this area of England rarely hiked across. And as someone who had just gone and done that, I was happy to say I was fairly surprised. It had been a tough six days for sure. My body had broke, I'd almost lost my shoes and I was worn out from hard walking. But man, it was awesome. The hidden gems were uniquely breathtaking. The countryside was amazing and it had just overall been a great section of my trip. I still had many days left on my walk across England. Roaring waterfalls, rugged mountains, and impressive scenery awaited me. But I certainly won't forget this section of England. It was special, and probably because I unfairly judged it before even going. The underdog had shone through, and I think that's what's so great about trips like these. You're forced to see places you normally wouldn't, and most of the time, they end up surprising you. 